Your food might be organic, but there are tools in your kitchen that could be adding toxicants to your meals. I'm going to show you how knife grooves release invisible plastic shards into your meals and how one simple swap prevents both plastic and bacteria from leaching into your food. I'm Dr. Yvonne Burkhardt, a PhD toxicologist, and I've spent decades studying how invisible chemicals migrate from surfaces and products into our bodies. Recent studies have detected microplastics in human blood, lungs, placenta, penis, and most in the brain. So it's no secret that these particles are being absorbed and are accumulating in the body. So today I'll show you five clean kitchen staples that aren't so clean and the easy swaps that cut your family's exposure before your next meal. And really quick, before we get into it, my team tells me that over 80% of people watching are not subscribed. So if you've been following this channel for a while, hit that subscribe button. It's free and it helps these videos reach more people who need them. And it genuinely supports the work that we're doing here. I appreciate you so much. Most people feel safe using BPA free plastics, but that label doesn't always mean what you think. Most BPA free products simply have replaced BPA with BPS or BPF, which are just chemical cousins from the same family and they behave pretty much the same way in the body. When plastic gets heated, scratched, or comes in contact with acidic or fatty foods, these chemicals start to migrate or leach into your meals. And that includes things like tomato sauce, dressings, lemon juice, and even breast milk. But let's be real, a lot of people are using plastic spatulas and spoons for cooking, which involves all of those factors which encourage leaching. A new study found that 200 semen samples, over 50 of them, contained microplastics and the amount correlated with the frequency of use of plastic tableware, which includes utensils, cups, and takeaway containers and just plastic food containers in general. This means that eating out of plastic containers and using plastic utensils could be damaging your fertility. So instead of relying on plastics, you can try packing your lunches in glass containers or stainless steel containers and using stainless steel utensils. And these are such simple swaps that will cut down on your exposure to these microplastics and plasticizer chemicals significantly. Quick story, my husband and I are big coffee drinkers and for years I thought it was cool to take our coffee on the go. I would buy those paper cups with cute like little seasonal designs, you know, kind of like the ones that you get at coffee shops with the plastic lid and the sleeve. I actually had one design for every season, holidays, Halloween, whatever. I had themed cups. I mean, they're so cute. How bad could they be, right? And then I learned something that stopped me in my tracks. Those paper cups are not just plain paper. They're actually lined with a really thin layer of plastic, which is what prevents the coffee and the liquid from soaking through to the paper. And when you pour hot coffee in that cup that's lined with plastic, that plastic lining is leaching tens of thousands of microplastic particles straight into your drink. And I don't know about you, I was drinking multiple coffees per day out of these paper cups. And I thought I was just sipping my morning latte, but turns out I was sipping plastic for years. Delicious. Anyway, now we bring our own mugs whenever we want to take drinks on the go. And my personal favorite is a double walled glass and even the lid is glass. So I'm not drinking hot coffee through a plastic lid. I'm gonna go ahead and link my favorite cup in the description below. And in case you're wondering, a stainless steel travel cup also works, but just skip the plastic lid. You can just open the lid and drink directly from the cup instead. And this might seem like a small swap, but again, it's actually keeping microplastics out of your bloodstream, potentially getting into your brain and just helping you have a cleaner, more low tox morning routine. Clean wrap is one of those things we use without thinking, but when it touches warm leftovers or fatty foods, it can quickly leach chemicals into your food. I mean, again, it looks harmless. It's one of those things that's everywhere, but that soft stretchy kind of property and the plastic, you know, squeaky sound, those are actually coming at a cost. These are made possible by hormone disrupting chemicals and the effect is even stronger with temperature and time in terms of leaching. And that's because plastic wrap is often made with plasticizers like phthalates that help to keep it soft and flexible. And when the wrap sits on warm, fatty, or acidic foods, those plasticizers start to transfer. 
And phthalates in particular have been linked to hormone disruption, especially in children. And that's what makes plastic wrap so sneaky because it looks harmless, it's everywhere, most people are using them, and it's convenient. But unfortunately, that risk is invisible. So instead, try using beeswax wraps for cool items or better yet, move your leftovers into a glass container with a lid. Then you can avoid the plastic wrap altogether. It's cleaner, long lasting, and it's safer for your family. I have another story time. So in case you're wondering, I've used pretty much all the products that I'm gonna to talk to you about today. My family used to get those gigantic boxes of plastic wrap from the warehouse store <clears throat> that shall be unnamed. Nothing against that place. I still shop there to this day, but oh my gosh, that giant box of plastic wrap, it's kind of like haunting to me now. We used to wrap everything in it. As a kid, I would even microwave leftovers with the plastic on. And I thought it was funny how the bubble wrap would become like a giant bubble because the steam was being released from the food. I had no idea. And that hideous blue and yellow box sat on our kitchen counter and I will always remember it. And no, hard pass. And here's something that most people never think about. It's not just what the plastic is touching, which is your food. It's also your daily cooking routine and what that is doing to your food because every time plastic meets heat, acid, or friction, those types of physical stressors are breaking the bonds in the material. And that's how these plasticizers and microplastics go from just being a somewhat inert object into being a microplastic and hormone disrupting residue generating machine. And this brings me to one of the most sneaky culprits that most people overlook. Every slice of a knife seems harmless, but what if that simple action is adding something invisible to your food? So let's say you're chopping veggies on a plastic cutting board, and maybe you've had one for years and it's covered in knife grooves. It seems pretty harmless, but if you zoom in on those knife grooves, you'll see that those aren't just scratches, but those are actually valleys that your knife has dug out. Every time you slice into a plastic cutting board, tiny particles are breaking off and some of them are ending up in your food. And this is especially concerning for kids whose systems are still developing. And that's because microplastics can disrupt gut health, impair your detox pathways, and even mess with your hormone balance. But here's the good news. Simply switch to wood or bamboo boards and you avoid this issue altogether. So if your board is due for a replacement, consider grabbing a bamboo or a single plank wood cutting board instead. These won't shed particles and they're much safer. I've got another story time. I remember buying a set of plastic cutting boards that came in this cute little organizer box when I moved into my first college apartment. Each one was a different color and it had a little tab on top with a picture of either a chicken, a cow, fish, veggies. That was basically to show what the board was meant to be used for, right? So I felt so proud of myself. It was so organized. I was so clean. I wasn't cutting my fruits and veggies on meat boards. I thought I was doing so well, but little did I know I was eating bits of plastic the entire time. I'm just glad I realized so I could stop and make better choices. Now let's move on to something else that most people have in their kitchen, which is nonstick cookware. That nonstick coating might feel like convenience, right? But that coating hides a big problem. That's because many nonstick pans contain PFAS, which are known as forever chemicals because they don't break down in the environment or your body for several years. So it seems like they stick around forever. When a nonstick pan gets scratched, overheated, or starts to wear down, which by the way is inevitable, it can release these compounds into your food. And even some ceramic coated pans that are marketed as safer can degrade over time and release unknown chemicals into the food. PFAS exposure has been linked to cancer, thyroid and reproductive issues and metabolic disorders. And these are long-term cumulative risks. They're not instant effects, but definitely worth avoiding where you can. So I would swap my coated cookware for a seasoned cast iron skillet, stainless steel, or pure ceramic from brands that fully disclose their materials. And even better yet, bonus points, if your cookware company is actually testing the products and showing that they're not leaching under acidic conditions, heavy metals, PFAS, and other toxic chemicals into your food, that's amazing. Not only do these options last longer and they cook really well, they don't add anything that you didn't ask for into your meals. 
I was so proud of myself when I got a nonstick pan that had a white coating. For some reason, it felt cleaner than the dark nonstick pans that you see everywhere. And I used it for years. Over time, that coating wore off, the pan became brown when it started off as white on the inside and dingy. And it wasn't even nonstick anymore, but I kept using it because that's all that I had. Then I decided to switch to stainless steel pans and I branched out to cast iron and also solid ceramic, not the ceramic coated stuff, which in my opinion has not been exonerated. So until there is more data on those, I will not use them and I'm not recommending them. And in case you're wondering about the cookware that I use, I'll go ahead and link them in the description. And you've probably heard debates about whether microwaves are toxic, but let's be honest. We all reheat leftovers from time to time without a second thought. But here's the thing, the microwave itself isn't necessarily your enemy. The real issue is what you're heating your food in, in the microwave. When you microwave plastic, you're not just warming up your leftovers, you're accelerating the release of billions of microplastics and harmful chemicals into your food. And many of these compounds like phthalates and BPA substitutes affect hormone and metabolic health over time. So switching to glass or stainless steel containers for heating, of course, you're not gonna put stainless steel containers in the microwave, but glass containers can go into the microwave, ceramic bowls and plates. These are some of the simplest and cheapest improvements you can make. So I would pour my soup or my food into a glass bowl before reheating it. It takes like a second or two and it basically cuts out the plastic exposure entirely. And I would also skip those plastic splatter covers and instead I like to put a plate over the container instead. And if you want to skip the microwave altogether, which I'm all for it, I don't use the microwave nearly as much as I used to, toaster ovens and air fryers aka convection ovens can also give you the same effect heating your food without the risks. And at this point you might be thinking, do I need to replace everything? The answer is no. I would start with the tools that touch your food the most often from the containers, the utensils, the cups, the bowls, all that kind of stuff. And focus on the ones that are exposed to heat, fat, or friction, because that's where the leaching occurs most often. So if you're swapping those out, then you're helping to cut down those exposures. And now you know how invisible plastics are sneaking into your food from everyday kitchen tools. But what about hidden hormone disruptors that are lurking in your child's shampoo, lunchbox, and even their pajamas. Go ahead and watch this next video where I show you the five most surprising toxins affecting your kids and the exact swaps that I use at home to protect their development without overwhelm. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.